All right, so today we are going to be talking about something I wish we didn't have to talk about, but it is very important if you are working with a fairly new age computer, and it is dongles. I have three types of dongles here on my desk, and we are going to be going through the different types, what you might want to use them for, the ups and downs of all three types, and um, my personal choice for my MacBook Pro, which only has two USB-C ports because it's the new M1, and so I kind of have to use these to get anything done. So we'll start out. On my desk here, we have a just short cord dongle. It's gonna have USB, SD card, HDMI, and that is about it. This is from a brand called uh, Kuya, I, I think. I don't know actually where I got this. I can't really remember. I've had it for a long time. And this is kind of the cheapest one that I have. It doesn't work very well, uh, and we'll go over that here in a few. Beside it, I have the Anchor flush mount. So it fits into both USB-C ports on the MacBook. It gives you HDMI, a pass-through charging USB-C, two USB-As, one more USB-C, and SD card, micro SD card. And then this right here, is the holy grail of USB hubs or dongles. This is the CalDigit TS3 Plus. This right here is going to be my favorite, and I'll, I'll let you know now, the best USB dongle or USB hub that you can get for your MacBook Pro or any Windows computer that uses USB-C. This is gonna give you everything you need. So on the hub itself, you have an SD card slot, audio in and out. You have uh, a USB-C on the front, a USB-A, both at five gigabytes per second. Then when you flip it over to the back, you have four more USB-As at five gigabytes per second. You have the USB-C Thunderbolt that will go to your computer. You have another USB-C Thunderbolt 3, one regular USB-C at 10 gigabytes per second, display port up at the top, optical audio and ethernet in as well as the plug right here for plugging it in now the downside to this is it's big you don't really want to travel with it and you have to plug it into the wall to use it but the few upsides to that is that you can run almost all the ports on this at the same time and there won't be any slowing down because it has its own power. You can use this to charge your MacBook without pass through this will charge it through its Thunderbolt 3 cable and you don't have to plug in your normal MacBook charger. So that is a plus when using this. Of course, this is going to be something you leave at your house and you don't really carry around with you. So we have these three right here. These are going to be kind of the three different types that you can get. So the ups and downs. So this right here is going to be my favorite style for travel. Now, of course, this one isn't a great brand. I don't recommend this. Uh, it doesn't fit very well in the computer and it has dropped connection multiple times when using it. That being said, using one with a cord that goes in for travel is my favorite way to do things for a few reasons. When you're using a flush mount like this, it's very handy, it's very small, it is very kind of convenient to use. However, this can put strain on your laptop or your MacBook Pro ports because if you, you know, move it at all, you're gonna be bending those in the ports. Also, if you have a lot of things hanging off this and there's not support on it, it will put some weight on the ports and over time can wear out your USB-C ports, which really aren't that strong in the first place, but uh, we won't get into the design of that right now. So this is going to be the most convenient, but not my favorite way to do things for travel. This is going to be the type that I recommend. There are a few that I will link down below that I think will probably be the best for you if you need a travel dock like this. Now, if you do most of your work from home and you work at your desk, a hub like the CalDigit is going to be your best bet. Now, it is gonna come in a much pricier range at 250 bucks for it, but you can buy it at the Apple Store so you know that they've tested it and it's safe. I've heard of some horror stories of people's MacBook Pro ports going out or bricking their MacBook when using these type of docks, the third-party docks or hubs. Now, they actually did just release a software or a, yeah, a software update for Big Sur that says it actually fixes that issue, but we'll see if that actually is true. I haven't tested it out. I also haven't had anything bad happen on my computer using the third-party docks, so I can't speak on what they really did in the software update 
but they said they have fixed the issue so we don't have to worry about it. With all that being said, for travel, these two are gonna be the best. I do recommend getting something with a cord so the strain doesn't go on the ports when plugging in things or unplugging since they can be a little bit tight on those USB-C ports. So that's been kind of my only issue with this. Other than that, this Anchor Hub is going to be one of the best quality ones that I have used. I went through a couple of them just testing out and seeing what I like best. There was one from a brand called Hyper, Hyper something that you can buy at Best Buy, and that was probably my favorite. It did, however, have a plastic mount on the side that went around your MacBook to keep it more stable. Only downside to that was that you couldn't close your MacBook with the dock in. So that was the best in terms of heat and speed, but I didn't like the design overall. This kind of has the best of all worlds where it doesn't get too hot, it does get pretty toasty, but not in a dangerous sense. But it does have all the ports, the speed that you need, and I think this is gonna be one of the handier ones to get if you wanna get a flush mount for your MacBook. So. Moving on, we're going to take these, we are going to put them off to the side because these are not the main point of today's video, although they, they are handy when you're traveling and you need something to carry around with you. Now this Cal Digit right here, if you are a content creator or you make videos or you're a photographer and you have a MacBook that runs on USB-C ports, this is gonna be what you want. This thing is phenomenal, the speeds are great, it's true to what it says, and one of the big upsides to this, UHS-2 card slot. So if you have a camera that runs on UHS-2 SD cards and you wanna get the full speed when reading the data and transferring it, this is gonna be one of the only devices I know of that has a UHS-2 card slot. I didn't think it was gonna be that big of a deal, but it has made so much of a difference in transferring speeds, I, I can't even tell you. I used to sit for hours and watch footage transfer and now it does it in a few minutes when I have you know full cards. So that's gonna be a big upside. You can use this for a headphone port, even though you have one on your MacBook. You can do headphone or audio out right there. So what how I use it is I have it plugged in, one Thunderbolt 3 cord. One Thunderbolt 3 cord is the only thing you need to plug it in. So I didn't think that Thunderbolt 3, I, I knew that it had a much faster capability than most cords, but I didn't know it was gonna have the capacity to do everything. So I have had four hard drives plugged in to this Cal Digit. I have had an SD card. I have had a microphone, uh, an external mouse, a monitor, all plugged into this and it runs great. Runs perfectly fine, no issues. This is going to be your best bet. You can see on the sides, it has heat dispersion so that it can stay cool and this thing doesn't get hot really at all. So that's probably gonna be your best bet. Plus, you can't beat the ethernet. I don't use it a lot, but that is a handy feature if you want to run wired internet and get the fastest speeds. Also, if you are an audiophile, you can plug in optical audio, which is gonna give you the best quality in terms of having computer monitors if you run them optically. That being said, it doesn't come without its quirks. One, I, I understand the upsides to it need to be plugged into the wall, but sometimes that's annoying if I wanna bring it out to another room and use it. You have to make sure you have an outlet to plug it into. I tested to see if it would work on just as a hub with USB hard drives and small devices like thumb drives or SD cards. It does not work if it's not plugged in. It's kind of, you know, personal preference. Other downside. It has a display port instead of an HDMI. I've never used display port. I've never had a monitor or anything that ran it. I can't speak on what's better, display port or HDMI. However, to run your HDMI and monitor to this, you have to get an adapter. And you can't just get any display port to HDMI adapter. You have to get an active adapter, which means I think it has a chip inside of it that helps the data transfer. So that's a downside. However, CalDigit does offer you a pretty cheap active adapter that you can buy from them off Amazon, and this gets the job done perfect. My monitor runs perfectly fine, so I just keep this plugged into my HDMI cord and into the Cal Digit at all times, and then I'm ready to go. So the cool thing about this is I have my hard drives plugged in, my monitor, everything I need, and whenever I wanna connect to them or use it, I just have to plug in one Thunderbolt 3 cord to my laptop, I'm charging, I have my monitor, my hard drives are plugged in, I'm ready to go. 
and that is the easiest workflow I've ever had. I don't like the fact that the MacBook only has USB-C ports, but it's made it super easy where everything's plugged into a, to the hub and I just use one cord to plug everything in. So with all that being said, if you're a creator, photographer, filmmaker, anything of that matter, spend the money, get yourself a Cal Digit TS3 Plus hub, and you will not regret it. This will get done everything you need to get done in your workflow, and you will never have to think about it again. So that's gonna be it for me today, guys. If you like the video, leave a like down below. Let me know how you feel about dongles and what you like to use down in the comments. And if you enjoyed the video, maybe think about subscribing. But that's gonna be it, and I will see you guys in the next one.